Okay, so my lab basically was uh, discovering springs, and I decided to use rubber bands, which was both a blessing and a curse. Um, so this was the original idea, just to use multiple rubber bands at the same time. Um, my motivation was the indie lab with the watermelon and all the rubber bands at first, and I was curious as to if it was an exponential or a linear relationship if you added springs of the same spring constant. Um, if that's, if I'm making any sense at all. Um, and this is what I got. It, um, I mean, most definitely uh, linear. Um, so multiple springs, you just add them instead of doing weird math, which is nice for calculations, but not what I was expecting. Um, thicker row bands, same thing. <clears throat> but, the interesting thing, with rubber bands, when you do a force over time graph, you get something like this, um, which is counterintuitive because it's supposed to just be a flat line with no slope. Um, for the last. And this happened with every rubber band, uh, with every combination of rubber bands. Um, Tell us your axes. Sorry. Uh, this is the spring constant as a function of time. Um, the spring constant was found by, um, I have to explain my setup first. Um, so there was a hook on the floor anchored and there was a force sensor and so the rubber band was, each rubber band was stretched a um, constant, each rubber band experienced a constant displacement and um, just divide that, uh, the force reading by that displacement to get spring constant. Um, yeah. And awesome. Um, and this is an example of the fit. As a general rule, B was almost always 0 0.02. Um, it averaged 0 0.0200 0 before or something. Um, and A was always the initial spring constant. Um, initial meaning in a perfect real world, <coughs> ideally B. Um, yeah, so this next slide doesn't make sense. It's mostly just for me to explain. Um, so the reason I found this lab interesting, I guess, is because uh, latex experience is a force decay to other springs um, because this is an extremely small force decay. I mean, 0 0.02, 1 to the 50th, so I'm sorry, T, 1 to the 50th. Sorry. Um, T, and it would take one quadrillion or something. Sorry, the 50th root of one quadrillion would be two. So it's an extremely small number and it would take millions, 342 million years for a spring constant to actually have. So um, while it looks drastic and it was scary, um, it's really, really small and that, I'm so curious as to whether or not like iron springs or nickel springs or whatever it springs out of. Um, also it has a similar decay, just much smaller. Um, yeah. So I answered a question and I brought up another question in my lab. And uh, yeah, that's it. Can you sketch your setup and then uh, while these guys are coming up with a question? We have time for a question or two. A question or two? We do have time for two questions. This is a reasonable what question. About three? We'll see. How about three? What about the 50th square root of one quadrillion? Did, did you calculate the 50th root of quadrillion? It's supposed to. Is it? I don't know. Try it. How many zeros it's, are there? 
A quadrillion? It's a quadrillion. Well, it's three more zeros than a trillion, because it's oh, America. You still can't calculate. Can we ask that 12 12 zeros? Zeros? Like some questions about... 15 like, zeros. I think it's 15. Can I just ask a good question about the experiment, how it was taken? <coughs> Is that a full question? Go ahead, ask him Robert, how long did you have to take Surprise, data? Surprise, I've heard Dr. Schuster. data for 25 hours. <laughs> what? Uh, wow. Wait, what? Well, yeah, because he had to <clears throat> get it over like a long period of time to oh, see it, right? Time. That's not including the one that was overnight. Data file was just bad. Never take data overnight. Log and Pro, not like that. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Log and Pro needs sleep like the rest of us. Um. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna eventually set up. Um. Anchor this way. A lot. Um. Force sensor rubber band. So it sounds like you said the spring constant decreased over time in the rubber bands, but isn't the spring constant supposed to be constant? So what accounts for the change in spring constant over time? Um, you know, I'm still working on that, honestly. Um, What's your best guess? It's a late, it's a latex decay. Oh, um, oh it's like the rubber band breaking then? Yes. So when I can, can I pull up the uh, orthodontics thing? The what? The orthodontics. <clears throat> right up the thing we looked up. Oh, no. Okay. So, <laughs> it's useful in people's mouths for braces. And so they, three people have done in-depth research, as far as I know, on this. And um, when you stretch a row band, the materials, the bonds break. And then when you put it back, they begin to reform. Um, so, if you just... If you graphed um, people not using force over time, <coughs> um, saying you stretched it, so it's stretched, it decays, and then nothing, and then it's just going to go down quicker. It's actually extremely interesting. Um, <coughs> it looks kind of like that. So. Um, yeah, just latex stretching, basically. And other materials don't do it as much, yes. What if you heat it? I hate you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so yesterday, while I was doing the sun gun thing, um, <clears throat> you're just mean. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that as the rubber bands got hotter, um, force increased, so the rubber bands would seem to contract as they get heated. I'm not sure why, that's counterintuitive, because like gummy bears, as they get warmer, they get stretchier, but eh. There's another question. Yes. So like you're saying that K decays as a function of time, is that because like it's, uh, the elastic limit is being... No, approach, um, or? I kept the rubber band within the elastic limit, this, it was not... Um, I made sure that my experiment wasn't producing the data it did because of experimental error. Um, and when a rubber band is stretched, its uh, elastic limit is much different than regular springs. Right. Um, K over no. This Sorry. is half over X. With regular springs, it's more like um, this, and this is about right here is where you reach the elastic um, yeah. limit. Maybe I drew it the wrong way. Um, but with springs, it really, it kind of just shoots up, and then it's <coughs> zero, because it snaps. So, I mean, even if, so the point of, you're saying that the elastic limit for a rubber band would be the point of like permanent deformation, so that would be like where it breaks. But if you don't think of it in terms of that, if you think of the elastic limit like altering the spring constant, then you're like... Sorry, um, I misheard you and spoke too soon. No, um... God, it's an awful line. Um, so, it hits its spring constant, it's, sorry, elastic limit and spring constant. Um, about right there, um, but it can. Anyone have a rubber band? Here you go. 
So when you stretch yeah. it, this right here is about its elastic uh, uh, limit. But mm -hmm. I could do that, right. and it's more like a string until it snaps. Okay, so is that is that then that like pseudo elastic limit like decaying over time? No. Um, Like, it's a good question in the sense that, yes, it's an elastic limit in the sense that the latex is changing, it, the rubber band's changing its characteristics, um, but it's not the rubber band's um, elastic limit. It's just, technically, yes, you could say, like, right here is its elastic limit because it's changing its properties, but um, hopefully I'm making sense. Am I making mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. If you understand me. Let's let that go. Cool. That's all the time we have for questions. Let's thank Robert again. You can ask him after class.